I felt pretty good as I left the dealership. They were the proud owners of a Prius hybrid, and I was the enthusiastic owner of a new Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. I stopped at a stoplight and sat there with a huge, goofy grin on my face. I knew what I was going to do. When the light came on, I pushed the gas pedal in. The supercharged 6.2-liter Hemi howled, and I started it up until it wouldn't budge. I downshifted it to an acceptable limit, and the smile became permanent. When I pulled into my driveway, I didn't drive it into the garage. In a minute, I was going to drive again. I stepped inside and smelled something cooking. It smelled like spaghetti. I never really liked spaghetti. Good thing I had plans. I didn't yell, I'm home, like I usually do. I just went upstairs, changed into my golf clothes, got my clubs out of the closet, and headed for the front door. Rachel came out of the kitchen as I was heading for the front door. Charles, where are you going? Whose car is that? Dinner's almost ready? Why are you dressed like that, and why do you have golf clubs? Well, honey, I'm going to play golf. This is my car. These are my golf clothes, and I need the clubs to play golf. She stared at me like I was crazy. You didn't say anything about playing golf. How about dinner? I'll have dinner at the country club, I told her. Have a nice dinner. I heard her voice just as I was closing the door. What do you mean, it's your car? I didn't have time to answer trivial questions, so I continued on my merry way. My phone started ringing almost immediately, so I turned it off. I got to the country club, enjoyed a very nice dinner with Ralph and Pete, and played nine holes. I hadn't played in a while, and it was noticeable. By the time we finished, I was starting to recover and felt better for the next time. We agreed to play Saturday morning, had a couple beers, and I went home. I knew there was a real storm brewing in my house. I pulled the SRT into the garage and went inside. A very angry-looking Rachel was sitting in her chair watching TV. Lightning flashed from her eyes and her eyebrows rose. What the hell is wrong with you, Charles? Thunder rolled off her lips. Nothing, actually, I said. What the hell is wrong with you? The rebellion seemed to take her by surprise. I should mention that I'm not usually this argumentative. I'm a calm guy. If I don't care about something, I stay quiet. I don't care about the color of the appliances in the kitchen. She wants stainless steel instead of black. As long as we can afford it, I don't care. It's stainless steel. I was sure she took my general lack of opinion as a lack of will. It was probably my fault to some extent. There would be no more of that. For a moment, she stared at me in surprise. What the hell is wrong with me? She practically hissed. You come home driving this gasoline-eating monster? Tell me you're going golfing, skip the dinner I made, and you have the nerve to ask me what's wrong? I thought about it for a moment. Yes, I said calmly. Yes, what do you mean, yes? She was practically foaming at the mouth. Yes, I actually have the courage to say it. Her face was blotchy and flushed. Are you drunk, Charles? Are you on drugs or something? I had a couple beers at the country club, but no drugs. Do you have any drugs you want me to take? She seemed to be at a loss for words, but quickly came to her senses. There might be. Maybe you need to take some antipsychotic medication. She stepped back and opened the door from the kitchen to the garage. The car must have impressed her. A beautiful car, she snorted. Are you having some kind of midlife crisis? I thought about it for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, what? She wanted to know. Yes, I'm having a crisis, and I guess 41 would be considered middle age. Well, what's the matter? She asked demandingly. What is what? That's a pretty vague question. What crisis? She seemed very annoyed. It's a secret. So you're having a crisis and you're keeping it a secret from me? She seemed unable to believe it. No, I said. Stop being an ass, she shouted. What do you mean, no? I'm not keeping it a secret from you. She splayed her hands. I'm not going to waste my time. What's that stupid toy doing in our garage? And where's the Prius? I traded it in for an SRT. I didn't like the Prius. I like the SRT. We agreed that the Prius is environmentally friendly and economical, she said. It's the kind of car that responsible people drive. You need to think about how you'll look shoving this beast into your work parking space. All the executives drive hybrids. How will they feel when they see you driving this dinosaur? Envy. We agreed on the Prius, she said. No, I never agreed, I said. I just agreed because that's what you wanted. That's right, she said sternly. Don't you care about my happiness anymore? Tomorrow you'll take it back and you'll get your Prius back. No, 
She acted like she had no idea what the word no meant. What does no mean? I won't take it back and I won't take the Prius back. She thought for a moment. A hurt expression appeared on her face. Three days ago, I would have cared. What's wrong with you, Charles? I've decided I like being called Chuck. From now on, you have to call me Chuck. Her mouth was ajar and she seemed speechless. I appreciated that. I went upstairs to shower and get ready for bed. When I stepped out into the bedroom, there was a pillow and blanket at the foot of the bed. You're going to sleep in the guest bedroom, she said. You're acting like a cranky child and don't expect me to sleep with you. I thought for a moment and pulled back the blanket. Her eyes popped out of her orbits as I started to sit up. What the hell do you think you're doing? Going to bed. I told you you weren't going to sleep here. Yeah, I heard you. There's nothing wrong with my hearing. Don't tell me where I can sleep. This is my half of the bed. The other half belongs to you. I'm not going in your half. It's only fair to tell you that you shouldn't climb on mine either. She rolled defiantly onto my half. I snatched the blanket from her hands and sat on top of her before lying on top of her. She tried desperately to push me off. I weighed 95 pounds. She weighed 54 kilograms. She failed miserably. Get off me, you idiot! She tried to slap me, but I caught her hand. That's my side, I told her. Your side is over there. You're not welcome on my side. I lifted up a little, and she rolled over onto her side. Then she started to cry. What's wrong with you, Charles? She sobbed. What's wrong with you? Why are you treating me like this? There is no Charles, I told her. Just Chuck. I told you I like being called Chuck. I thought you liked being called Charles, she cried. No, you were the one who liked calling me Charles, I said. I never liked it. I just went along with it for your sake. Why don't you want to make me feel good? I don't think you respect me. I think the reason you don't is because I've spent all my time trying to make you happy. I'm done. Now I'm going to make myself happy. If you're happy because I'm happy, that's great. If you're not, big fug. She made a quiet crying sound. What's wrong? Yesterday you were the best husband in the world. The next day you're a son of a bitch to me. It actually took three days. Not one day at all. She was staring at me. She was very much like one of those chicks waiting for their mother to feed them. I don't have any worms for you, I told her. She stared at me as if an alien had invaded my body. Worms? What the hell is wrong with you? Are you sick? The answer to the first question is complicated, I said after a moment's thought. The answer to the second question is yes, she thought for a moment. Are you sick? Yes. What's wrong with you? What kind of sickness makes you trade in your beautiful car for some gasoline-eating monster? How sick are you if you can go golfing and have a beer? It's a heart problem, I told her. She looked embarrassed. Do you have clogged arteries or an irregular heartbeat? What does the way you're acting have to do with a heart condition? It's not really a disease. I had a change in my heart like a transplant. Are you going to tell me what's going on? I found out three days ago that you're a cheater. All that love in my heart died and was replaced by a heart just like yours. Now I care about me and I don't care about you. What did you call me? She demanded. Maybe you should consider getting your hearing checked. Did I stutter? No, you were very clear, she said. I don't know what bug is up your ass, but you'd better deal with it. You just accused your wife of being a cheating whore. I don't like to look at it as an accusation. It's more like a statement of fact, I explained. What the hell are you talking about? She was practically screaming. There's no need to yell, I'm right here, I said. I'm talking about your little date at the hotel with Alan and Marcy Baker. Her face went pale. What? How? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know who the president is? What day is today? She just stared at me. Someone has a disturbing short-term memory loss, probably from a stroke. I pulled out my phone and opened the chat room. They were saved in the chat room and on my phone. I wasn't going to tell her where else they were saved. There were pictures, big as life-size. Rachel, between the two of them, was walking through the door of room 177 of the Dorchester Hotel. She was kissing Marcy, and Alan had his hand on her ass. Where did you get that? She asked. McLean sent it to me, I said. I'm pretty sure he sent them to Lonnie, too. They're pretty pissed off. McLean is our son, and Lonnie is our daughter. She awed. McLean? 
he saw. You're lying. You got them from somewhere. I showed her the picture McLean took. No, he was there dropping off a customer when he saw you come in. He just wanted to say hello. Imagine his surprise at your little date. I like that word, don't you? It wasn't, oh God, it's, what are you going to do, Charles? Charles isn't going to do anything, I said. Chuck's already on the case. He's already organized fatal accidents for the three of you. She looked at me fearfully for a minute. I guess she thought I wasn't kidding. Really? What are you going to do? Nothing, I said. I've hired some of my friends to do everything. Alan and Marcy are going to die tomorrow. With you, I'll wait until next Wednesday. I figure that since Alan and Marcy are going to work tomorrow, their airbags will be out of commission. They'll deploy, causing the car to crash. Of course, by then the airbags will have deflated. Mario is convinced the crash will be fatal. It's well known that these Priuses don't do well in crash tests. That's why I got rid of mine. She stared at me with her mouth open for a minute. It wasn't a very attractive look. She gathered all her composure as best she could after that ominous revelation. Oddly enough, she seemed indifferent to the probable demise of her sex buddies. Just selfish, I thought. What about us? She managed to get out. Oh, good, we're gone now. Of course I'm divorcing you. You're due at work tomorrow. Do you think the company will mind? Three of their employees were on a date? God, I love that word. A date leading up to a divorce and serving papers at work could create some awkwardness there. I doubt Colton Fisk will like the drama since he's a big man in the church and all. I wonder if Alan and Marcy will be allowed to have the funeral in the church. This caused Rachel to let out a strange, distorted squeal, sounding as intimidating as some peacocks at the zoo. I turned off my light. Good night, Rachel, I said. I wonder if I'll get both halves of the bed in the divorce. She threw herself on my half of the bed and clung to my back like a leech. I don't want a divorce, Charles, she sobbed into my back. I didn't answer. Charles? She pulled me tighter against her. Charles, I don't want a divorce. Silence. She looked over my shoulder. Charles? I looked at her. There is no Charles, I told her, and you're on my side of the bed. Then God damn it, Chuck, then. Chuck, I don't want a divorce. I rolled over to her. I didn't want a cheating whore as a wife either, but I got her even though I didn't want her. Funny how that works, huh? She didn't seem to have the same curiosity as me. Chuck, Chuck, I'm so sorry, she said. It was just something I wanted to try. I was curious what it would be like to be with another woman. Me too, I said. Wow, are we so much alike? I was also under the impression that Alan was a man. Does anyone else know that he's not cisgender? Don't be ridiculous, she said. It was a threesome, but I didn't have sex with him, only with Marcy. Did he sit in the chair and watch? Not a cisgendered voyeur, pervert. He was doing Marcy while she was doing me, she admitted. Do you realize how ridiculous this conversation is? What possible fancy could have made you think in your wildest dreams that this was helping your cause? She hesitated for a moment, but couldn't seem to come up with anything plausible. I was going to, I was going to give you the same thing, she finally squeezed out. The same thing. What does that mean? I asked. A threesome with me and Marcy, she said. You just told me you were interested in being with another woman. Marcy isn't the kind of woman I'm interested in, I said. I was thinking about the one who hadn't slept with half the men in town. Who were you thinking about? What the hell? Chuck was on fire. I might as well have been playing with her mind. Well, Lily was always at the top of my fantasy list, I admitted. My sister? She squealed. You asked me that, I reminded her. Lily was sexy as hell. Rachel was a walking wet dream. Lily was all of those things, but more. Blonde hair, brown eyes, a few freckles on the cutest little nose imaginable, and that body. She had the most beautiful shape. It was the kind of shape that just looking at it made your tongue go hard, not to mention other parts of your body. Her tits were big, round, and firm, and she had the most delightful ass on the planet. She exuded sensuality from every pore and made men do stupid things when she was around. She was five years younger than Rachel and me, had been briefly married when she was in her late thirties to an up-and-coming NFL player, but dumped the bum when he washed out, started drinking, and couldn't keep a job. When Rachel and I were dating, we were in college and Lily was in high school and she had a crush on me. 
It was funny, and I loved the hell out of her, but I never took action. Yes, I felt the lust, but I wouldn't do anything even if I had the opportunity. I wondered if Rachel would really go for it. And more importantly, if Lily would. It didn't matter. Rachel was leaving me anyway, but this was a very good opportunity to drive her away. I could see the wheels turning in Rachel's head. I'm not going to have a threesome with my sister, she finally said. I shrugged and turned to go back to sleep. The divorce went as smoothly as it could possibly go. Rachel fought it as hard as she could, but divorces can't be dragged out like they used to be. Most people know what happens in divorce, and it wasn't fun, but Chuck enjoyed life. How do you leave your beloved? Just take out the trash. Sometimes the trash objects to being taken out, but hey, it happens. I never got to have that threesome with Lily. I'm quite content to be paired up, though. The lush body of this cutie being the little spoon next to me doesn't even allow me to dream of a threesome.